Hello everybody, I'm Brian Collins, Realtor with Keller Williams Victor Valley. Today on our command training, uh, we went over adding HTML pages to your website. There were some mobile issues that Android users were experiencing getting to um, mobile command um, on the Chrome browser. And we talked about the importance of using the right browser on your laptop, desktop, whatever, um, and clearing cache and cookies and why that's important. So stay tuned, have fun, learn something. Talk to you guys later. Bye. All right, all right, all right. Let's get this party started. Command class today. We are <clears throat> uh, I learned something over uh, I think it was last maybe a week ago. Not sure. It was it was a little bit ago. Um let me see. So there was a uh A title rep, <clears throat> Bobby Trango went over um, some of these things in their title app. And um, last week when I was on the tech leadership call, I learned that you can paste HTML code in a website um, in any of your, um, when you're building a website, if you add a page, you can add a text box and then paste HTML code in there. And the text box will read the HTML code and create a new, you know, a formatted website or whatever. So anything that you can embed, whether it's YouTube videos or um, widgets from Yelp or Zillow or, you know, whatever, um, anything that you can embed, you can create a page on your website. So I wanted to go over that because it's real easy. Usually the websites that you're, that you, that you're using, like Zillow, all of those, um, they're going to provide you with this code and all you have to do is copy it and with about three clicks, paste it into a page on your website and, um, you know, boom, Bob's your uncle. You got yourself a, a, a brand new website page that's, you know, got a fun widget on there, whether it be, um, you know, a, a real estate calculator for, um, for somebody, sorry, sorry for reaching across the camera there. Um, or, you know, whatever you want to do. So, um, people, let's see, I think Johnny was the only one that was on that call. Um, so this should be new to almost everybody. So everybody is obviously still joining here. I'm going to give everybody a few more minutes, 10, we'll start at like 10.05 or 10.07 or something. And just give people a couple more minutes. Oh, look at Jeanette showing up. That makes me happy. Oh, there's Jim. Hi, Jim. I didn't see you there. Hello, um, Kung Lee, and hello, Chris, Donna, Mike Franco. Is that Ruben calling on his phone? I can't tell who that is. Oh, no, that's uh, James West. Mr. James West, is that you up in the corner? Hey, Brian, it's Jeanette, but my video's not working. That's okay. I believe you're there. Okay. Who is Krish? It's me on my computer. I see Chris, but then there's also Krish. Yeah, but it's me on my computer. Oh, so you're on there twice? Yeah, because then I can see. But on my phone, it's too small and I can't see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even Dude. with office, which I don't have on, so. There you go, that's fine. Oh. Do what you gotta do. I mean, you're totally skewing my numbers, but it's fine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, just count one as Rose. I should have just put Rose in there. She wants to learn too. Yeah. She's here. See? See? There she is. All right. So we got a couple so more people. Happened. Looks like we're just going to give people a few more minutes and then um, we'll get started here. Cool. And that, yeah, Mike Galante, that's who I was uh, wondering who that was. Um, there you go. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> I think everybody's here. We'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to, what am I doing? I'm sharing my screen, right? Okay, so 
anybody who um, anybody who has access to pretty much anything and pretty much anything on the internet even there there are there are websites out there designed specifically for you to create HTML um, HTML is just a, a really simple code that you know allows websites to be designed um, it's not the newest standard, but it's definitely the oldest and still probably most widely used. Um, you can go to an HTML creator website and drag pictures, text, everything the way that you want it to look. And then there's a button that says copy the code and copy the code. So that way you can take that page and put it directly on your website. Um, one thing that I thought was kind of fun was when we were going through um, the Chicago agent, and this also works for Fidelity agent. If you're either one of those, they use the exact same app and they use the exact same everything. Um, I'm for this example, I'm just going to use the Chicago agent because I have the most access to that one. Um, and this particular piece is, it's a premium feature. It costs $10 a year. It's not expensive. It's 10 bucks a year for the Chicago premium um, or fidelity. If you already have fidelity, this it, it's exactly the same. I'm sure if you've been on fidelity agent, you know, they're identical. It's the same company. They just brand the apps differently to different companies. So you can do all of this stuff. But what happens is if you go into this premium thing, they have these lead gen calculators, which I thought was really fun. And um, they have a net sheet app, which is the one that I specifically use, but uh, I am going to, I'm going to do one for buyers. So I'm going to do a monthly payment. These, these calculators just, you know, the, the pictures are not, you know, fantastic or anything, but um, you can see when you click on them here, let me see if it'll load the actual, the calculator. So it just says, oh, monthly affordability. So how much am I, I'm hoping to spend, you know, you know, I don't know, $1,800. That's what my monthly payment wants to be. And I'd like my down payment to be 5% and all that good stuff. So let's go, and it says, okay, I can buy a $280,000 house with these numbers. So this is a good way to generate leads. This is a good value to add to people. Um, you can create a standalone web page that says, that you can share on social media. It says, hey, do you wanna know how much house you can afford? Use my calculator. And then you put people on to, apparently it's gonna refresh. And then you can put people on to the, um, you send them this link. So what we have to do on our side is we have to go to agent.kw.com and then um, we go down to our consumer tab, right down here, consumer tab. And then we need to create a new landing page. So that's a new standalone page. And we're going to name it. Um, we're going to name the landing page. This is going to be monthly affordability calc. Okay. No big deal. So we have this blank canvas that's called monthly affordability calculator. I like to use the branded header. I feel like it looks real nice. So I'm going to drag and drop that there. It's got my name. It's got all my, all my information that I need. Um, and then uh, let's see. And then what we're going to do is below the agent header, I don't want to, I want to have the affordability calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down instead of widgets, which are pre-formatted and pre-existing things that you can use on your website, like a legal footer or a lead form. You can put a, a listing or a market snap for a specific neighborhood. You can feature a YouTube video. You can ask for testimonials. Um, you can put a download my app button. That's great. But what I want, I just want text. So I'm going to come to here. I'm going to go to content blocks and I'm going to find the text box. So there we go. That's where I'm going to put my text right there. And then I can go back to my widgets because I would also like to have a download my app button. Um, actually, and I feel like if you don't want to download your app, I think the local expert also has a download my app button. So you can do that. And it's kind of a little bit more branded specifically to you. So that's what we're going to do. So now that we've got that configured, we're going to configure the widgets because we do have to have your local with the local expert configured. Um, the link to download the app. I don't know what my Keller Williams um, app actual URL is. 
Um, but you find that by going back into, and you can have multiple win windows open. Um, it's under settings. No, sorry. It's under your consumer site again. And it's under site and app settings. URLs. And then right here, this is your app URL. So we can copy and paste that. And then that goes right here. Paste that right there into the download the link. It should pre-fill. I don't know why it doesn't. And in fact, I think that um, uh, I am going to, for the local expert, I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick just so that I can send that off and say, hey, this should be pulling. You have all my information. This should be pulling automatically. We shouldn't have to do that. So, um, yeah, so that's that. I'm going to save and apply this. So that's good. I'm going to go back to my branded header and I'm going to say, oh, this is only 30 characters. So you have to be precise in your words. Um, there we go. Perfect. 29 characters. How much home can you afford? Blah, 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 blah. And then I'm going to save and apply it. Okay, so now that we've saved that and everything, here's what we want to do. We want to edit our text. But what are we going to put in there? So we're going to go back to our Chicago agent or Fidelity agent or Zillow or anywhere that is created an HTML code that you want to put on your website. And we're going to click on, for this one, we're going to click on share. And then you can see right here, this embed code. You'll see, you'll see embed codes on YouTube. You'll see them um, a, a lot of different places. Um, I believe you can even have like Yelp reviews as an embed code. Um, so you can do that if you want and have your Yelp reviews in there. I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna highlight this. I'm gonna paste it. That's it. Um, and that is it. And you think, oh, that looks crappy. But we're gonna save this. We're going to apply it. Landing page was created. So here's my new website here. I'm going to change the URL just so that I, I have an idea of what it is and I can look at it. Uh, I'm going to do monthly portability. So now you can see this. Now it says monthly affordability.html. If you share this link, people can actually look at the link and see, oh, this is what it is. I don't feel like I'm being duped. Um, sometimes when people see like this, they go, oh, what does that mean? I don't, I don't feel like I trust that. So I would definitely trust that, or I would definitely change that as well. Um, and yeah, you can absolutely use it. So if you already have a subdomain, Deborah, um, you can go ahead and um, uh, you can just, you can use that subdomain in that where I asked for your specific URL, instead of coming over here and copying and pasting that. Um, honestly, that's what I would, um, that's what I would use specifically for, um, for, for, for what I was going to do. I was gonna put it in the subdomain, but I feel like that was a whole different video. So um, yeah, and then John, the, I, I created it as a standalone website, but you can absolutely make this part of your website. So right now, as a standalone website, this is what their people are going to see. How much home can you afford? And then there's this little window here. And then, of course, it has all my stuff, and then they can download my app. So after they find out how much they can afford, then they can download my app and show me this. So now, yes, you can... Do this exact same thing, create a new site on your agent site, create a page. Um, oops, fire calculator, sure. The only difference in between the website, because everything's already gonna be branded to you, you don't get as many widget options. Um, Filmmakers must be getting desperate. I'm getting a call from Anchorage, Alaska. We're running out of numbers to use. Um, so you can just drop your text right in there. Um, 
and then paste it in there. And I guess you do have to, maybe you have to have some sort of widget and then maybe put it download the app. And then you can configure, because apparently you can't, you can't save it with just text in there, which is, which is weird. Um, so you have to have something in there. I guess you could put in your contact form if you wanted. You can configure your widgets, download the app. Now see the download your app already has your re has your button redirect already in there. So you can change this to download my KW app. And then you can update the subtext if you want. Click save and apply. Publish it. So now if we go to um, my website here, under here, there should be a, no, there is not. Oh, that's right. Okay. When you add a new site here, um, yeah. So when you add a new site here, you have to go into, I think app, yeah. You have to go into your settings and then go to site pages. And then once you, just because you've created it, doesn't mean it automatically shows up on your website. You have to go into site page settings. You can see profile about client contact reviews and I'm going to add a page and now I'm going to add the buyer's calculator. I feel like this is something that was very frustrating for a lot of people. Also myself, I just, you can just see, I just forgot again. Um, you think that if you, Oh, I'm going to create a page and you publish it, it should be good to go and you're ready to rock and roll. But you have to go into this, into consumer, the site and app settings up here and then go to site pages and then add a new page. And then, then you have to you do your new title page. So this is going to be um, buyers, let's see, calculator. And then um, the slug, the URL slug, that's gonna be like um, um, the slash, you know, whatever you want. So listenguruca.kw.com slash um, buyers calc. You just can keep it short and simple. SEO description, this is gonna be your search engine optimization. These are gonna be keywords that are gonna help Google and Bing and Yahoo and all these other websites who um, you know are search engines. They're gonna help when they say, oh, how much, how much house can I buy? Or let me get a calculator or something like that. Like these are the keywords that they're gonna search for in this box. So this is important that you do this for all of your website pages, um, creating the, uh, you know, creating SEO for all of those is going to help random people on the internet find your, find your website over somebody else's. If you have good SEO, then you have good uh, random lead generation. Um, so we're going to say, uh, buyers, affordability. Whatever. I don't. My, for some reason, my fingers are not working this morning. I don't know if I didn't warm them up properly or what. Buyer's affordability calculator. Yeah, that's good. I'd probably include more keywords and stuff like that, but I'll come back to that later. So, save. Pay, uh oh. Save page changes. Let me see if this works. Okay. Maybe. there we go so i think that maybe the comma in page title i don't think you can have um punctuation like that um now page title just so that you guys know this is what you see right here on my website my page title is brian j collins on the kw command site it says site settings command that's what each one of these, so um, so if I want to get real fancy with it, I could do buyer's calculator and make it copy like the, the, the Keller Williams thing up there. And I can do, um, I'll do my hashtag so that way it always comes up. Page title is also going to appear in the navigation. So this right here, this is your page title. So you want to keep them all very similar, I guess. So. Um, 
So maybe I don't want to do that because if I save this right now, okay, and then I refresh my website, now it should show up here. I should have my, there it is, virus calculator. So you can see it says listing guru California. So that's not going to fit with the, the scheme there. So I'm going to take that off because I like everything to look the same, which everybody should. So there we go. So now if I refresh the website here, now it should just say buyer's calculator. And so now I can come here to the buyer's calc, and then I have a monthly affordability calculator right there, download my KW app. My already my contact form is already in there. All of this stuff is already there. So I don't have to do a, a branded header because it's already got everything there. So um, all right. Questions, what you guys got? Go ahead and unmute yourselves. If you want to ask something, I would love to help you answer it. Hey, I do have a question. Sure. Um, the other day, or the last time we did this, um, you were trying to do a listing, uh, a listing page. Mm -hmm. And not, none of my listings, so for example, if I go to search like any of my listings, or actually not even any, but even like my new one that I just put out, uh, I can't find some of my listings. Um, you can't. And I'm searching them by address, which shouldn't matter because they should be posted. Is right. there something in our settings or in our profile that we need to activate to to do, um, like to activate an MLS to our command or no? No. No. Um, That's weird, man. Yeah, that I mean, it is weird. And I feel like you're going to have to get with, um, you're probably going to have to, Uh, what okay what um you're are you only hdaor no i have the crmls also do you enter your listings into crmls or hdaor hd okay um so the only thing that i can think of is that maybe the because you're entering it because i enter all mine into crmls and i let it feed to hdaor um and i feel well, like mine mine show up so i'm thinking that maybe there's something in the hdaor feeds to the crmls and then um the idx for our um the idx for for the command system um will pull from crmls so as long as your listings are showing up in crmls then ideally they should show up well, the problem is, is that like I did a, like I created a landing page for, for like a new listing and I can see some of my other listings that are not, cause none of my listings are in the, none of my listings are in the CRMLS right now. N none of the ones that I like tried to pull up. <clears throat> so, um, but when you go into CRMLS, you're seeing them. Yeah. 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 What I'm saying is, so what I'm saying is the, the listing itself, like on the landing page, when I go to um, click in and browse listings, and then I can search like one of them that I have in Hesperia, um, that one will show up and it's only in the high desert um, where like some of my other ones will not. So what's the, what's your, what's the address? Okay, hold on, let me grab it. Okay, so type in, one 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 three one orchid avenue so this one's pending and it's only so this is not a co-listing or anything like that and it's going to show it'll show up um well it's and it's pending so it's not on the market right now that's why okay. you're to do it. but it oh, does show the area that it should be because it's like probably this one yes so like so like what I'm getting when I'm trying to do my landing page for that, if I was to type in that property, that's the first one that pops up. Right. When I type in the one on smoke tree that I just listed, it doesn't come up, which is really weird. I mean, I, I can't say I know. I mean, I don't know how often it updates, so um, I'll have to find out and I'm going to add that to my list of things to talk to. Um, like remember the other day we were looking up the Spring Valley Lake home that yeah. one I tried to pull up right now and it doesn't even show up it still doesn't show up it still doesn't show up which is weird so I'm wondering if anything that's co-listed doesn't show up which it should either way hmm. 
So they're co so we'll after this we'll get together we'll talk about the details so I have them to give to Brock so that he can find. Yeah. Hopefully they'll they'll be able to figure out what it is. Maybe uh, I can share like when it's just you and I I'll share my screen and I'll record it so you can send it to him. Yeah. Okay. Um, my only I guess more of a concern than a question, but yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that, I mean, that's good. If anybody else is having, if anybody else is having problems, please let me know as soon as possible because every Thursday um, I talk with the, the leadership of the region and we just sit around and tell everybody, you know, oh, here's, here's the problems that we're having. And then we all kind of brainstorm to see if there's something that's pretty obvious that we've missed. And a lot of times our problems get solved just by talking about them. And sometimes we have to, you know, escalate them up to, you know, support and, um, they have their own direct line to support that we can get your problem solved even faster because we're working through them this way. So um, if you've got any problems, if you're playing around with something and something's not working properly, tell me about it. Let me know so that I can, we can work it through it and, and figure out what's going on. We want this product to be the most amazing product ever. And you know, that only helps with us, everybody using it and you know, figuring out all the problems so that we can narrow it down. Um, so John, we'll talk after we get done here so that we can look at those. Um, but anyway, so um, let me see if I can, let me see Yelp. Um, I think that you can, um, if you log into Yelp. Maybe you can embed them through your actual, like log into your account. And then you can probably embed when you re when you look at the reviews. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, you just you just go to Yelp and then you look up your own page. Yeah, I think um, that's what. It, well, I think I think um, you have to log in though, or maybe not. Yeah, if you go, uh, oh, Stephanie Angel comes up number one. Good job, girl. And then, okay, so. Under reviews, where's the reviews? Here we go. Okay, uh, that's what it is. I feel like you can embed the review here. So if you wanted to create a, a page of just embed, of just reviews from Yelp, this is what it's gonna look like here. All you have to do is copy this code. And then um, kind of like you just create one text box for each. Oh, uh, no, maybe just that one up. And create a page. Um, do a content block. Did I? I can't remember if I copied it or not. Oh, okay, I this stuff. Copy the code. Okay. Go here. So imp. Good. There we go. And then I'm gonna do another text box right here. And we're gonna do the other one. I don't know why I only have two of you know, makes me angry. Oh, there's that one there. Uh, so again, you have to have a widget here. So I'll just put a download my app. So that's good to go. Configure widgets, it's already configured. So you click done, save changes. Was this a standalone website? No, this is, no, this is fuzzy. Okay. Let me cancel this. We'll just call this Yelp reviews. Save changes, hit yes. Okay, so now I have a new page called Yelp reviews and then go into my site and app settings and go to my site pages, add a page, click on Yelp reviews. Let's call it Yelp. And there's an SEO. Like that. Page settings changed. Now, when I refresh my page here under my header, I should have Yelp reviews. And then, and then as I get them, I don't even have to. So, the testimonial review that's going on there, I feel like right now it's a little bit wonky because you can add testimonials to your website, but then it won't dynamically update every single time someone gets, um, someone adds a review. But this way, if you get a new Yelp review, you just go copy the embed code, come back to your site petting, site, site settings, under your agent site. Oh, and so here's the thing. 
you used to be able to edit from here. You go, oh, well, you click on this little three dots and edit. Now you can only delete. If you want to edit your web pages, anything that you've created, you have to go into designs. And then designs is going to have all of your websites here. These, these right here are your pages. If you just, if you just want to narrow it down, these are all the different pages that you've, that you've created. Um, so I'm assuming that this is going to be my Yelp review website and then it opens up all of this stuff and then you can go back in here and say, Oh, I'm going to add one more review and then go in there and edit that and do that. And I like it. So I'm going to keep it. Oops. I don't know why this didn't save. But now I'm going to save the changes. Um, it did duplicate it. So that's, that's a little weird that it duplicated it. One more bug, I guess. So maybe when you make a change, it creates a duplicate copy and then you can have to, you have to go in and you have to change in that app settings, that sort of thing. Um, let's see if rate my agent has An embed code. I don't think so. I feel like they're trying to be an all-in-one dev, so I don't feel like they're. Um, I don't feel like they're really trying to. Yeah, I looked up also real satisfied, and on the public site, you don't. All you see is the reviews. They don't let you do the, do it either. They do have widgets, so. Uh, nifty tool explorer. Yep, there it is. So there you go. So here, here's your embed code for Rate My Agent. Um, you can do a light or a dark theme, and then you just have to, looks like copy and paste. Or you can email the, maybe email the code to yourself. Uh, uh, in the code. That's a cool little widget to have there. Verified reviews. I feel like I'm going to use that better than uh, Yelp. So in my email here, new. Whew. Yeah, that was the whole thing. So I guess I did not. You don't need to email yourself this. It is literally just this exact box. So. Um, we can copy and paste that. Maybe instead of Yelp reviews here, we're going to go into designs. I'm going to change this one. It only shows up the one here, though, so that, that's kind of weird. So uh, I'm going to delete this one here, and then this one right here, I'm going to edit. And then I'm going to paste in that, and we'll see how that works. Okay, so now here's my new agent site, and you can tell if it's if it shows up in your in your navigation bar on your website. If it shows up in here, you're going to see the green eyeball right here. So you can tell that these two are not showing up on my website. I have to go here, go here. Actually, I'm going to delete. No, well, just select a new page. Go ahead and select that one. And. The, I don't know what just happened. Okay, reviews. So we'll call it reviews. Reviews with that. So that's fine. So we'll shave, save, shave the changes. Now, let's see what that looks like. Oh no, this page is lost. But we can. Oh man. But we can go here and go to reviews, and that should be my new page. There it is, okay. Oh. Oh, I see what's going on, okay. Um, I already had a page called Reviews. Um, right here, I have this Client Reviews. So it's weird that it would allow me to have two different ones. 
I'm going to go ahead and delete that page. Okay. So let's just go home. So now my client reviews are still there. I don't feel like this is updating. There we go. It just took a second because now it's there. Client reviews. So here is Rate My Agent, a widget built into my website with all of my reviews that I've gotten over a while. Um, and then it has my download, my app and a contact page with all of my other information. So there's a lot, yeah, copy and paste, yep. So um, yeah, and Deborah, I, I agree to you that, that, I mean, that particular thing is better than Yelp. The only problem is, is I've never gotten one piece of business off of Rate My Agent and I've been using them as long as Yelp. Um, people still use Yelp, so it's still really important that you um, uh, that you get your Yelp reviews done. And I've been reading about them because I don't like the way that, you know, they hide half of them. If you send someone a link to your Yelp account and ask them to review you, Yelp hides that review. That's why there's 14 hidden reviews and two that are not. Um, so you have to have people go to Yelp and search Yelp naturally. They have to search for real estate agents in Victorville to be able to find you or something like that or whatever keyword makes you up at the top. Um, that is going to improve your Yelp score. That's gonna improve your Yelp uh, rating and um, how, pe how easy it is for people to find you on Yelp. Rate your agents great, it's great to show off. So I'm definitely gonna continue using that because I feel like this looks a lot nicer um, and it's less buggy than all of the, the other ways that we have. So that's something to use, but you definitely want to use Yelp and you want to be able to get people in there because I mean, I've taken probably four listings and three buyers off of Yelp. So I've never paid anything to Yelp. I've never, you know, bought their fees or, you know, paid their service fees or ads or anything like that. Um, but they provide business because people search and my profile is complete. I put things on there often. Go ahead, Chris. Um, so you know how when we get started, our um, clients are from our sphere of influence. And I believe you've said before that if you're friends with people on Facebook, that Yelp won't use those reviews. Yeah. So what is the way to get around that? Since the majority of my clients are people that I'm already friends with on Facebook. Um, you can say, hey, I'm going to unfriend you before you do your review. Um, I have gotten in the habit of not becoming friends with my clients on Facebook until after the transaction is complete and they review they've reviewed me. Um, yeah, I'm talking about like, like people that I was already friends with because that's a fear of influence. Yeah. I mean, th there's not yeah. really going to be any way around that unless you are willing to unfriend them for the time being. Well, until... And I'm willing to do that, but wasn't there a period of time in which you had to be unfriended before you could ask for that review? Yeah. I don't have any idea. I don't know what that was. I'm just, I'm just, I'm speculating on all this. So, okay. Um, yeah, I would probably say, you know, want to be unfriended for a while before you ask for the review. Um, if you, they've already done the review, then it's not going to matter. They're, okay. you know, whether you unfriend them or not, because they're not going to dynamically change it afterwards. So, okay. yeah, um, definitely. I feel like that's something we need to research and we need to figure that out. I feel like if you can break the, you know, the Yelp algorithm, I feel like then you're going to be on top of the game and, you know, getting that done. Everybody should, you know, try and figure that out so that they can figure out exactly how to get that stuff done in it. But anyway, so any any place that you can find a widget or any place that you can find an HTML code, um, um, so this right here, I know it looked weird. It's what you see is what you get. HTML editor. Um, these are, let me see if you can see it. 
<clears throat> so here's, so this is something that you can do. What you basically are looking at is like, you can create anything you want in this website. If you, this is just an option here, but you can clear this whole entire thing. Um, you can clear out, jeez, come on, man, stop being, you can clear that whole entire thing out and then you can say, oh, I want to drag my picture in here and I, here's an article I'm going to write. So I'm going to, you know, write a bunch of words and then here's another, you know, affordability calculator, blah, blah, whatever. Like you can hyperlink things, you can create anything. And then as you build it, it's going to build this HTML code on the side. So when you're done, you can copy and paste the HTML code, go right to your website and then boom, you have that exact, whatever you just built directly on your website, able to show the world, you know, that you have that. So, um, these are kind of fun. If you're, if you have an idea, you're like, Oh, I really want my web page. I really want it to do this. Then, um, you know, then you have that ability to kind of build it without knowing, without knowing HTML, without knowing any coding. So it's HTML dash online.com. That was that you have a, you can read the, if you want to learn HTML or whatever, like I know a lot of the HTML code myself. Um, so I feel like I can, I can pretty much build a website if I needed to, but it's real time consuming and it's a lot of stuff to remember. And I can't remember everything cause that was from high school. That was like 20 years ago. So I need to be refreshed. So there's articles on here and there's a tutorial or there's the, the what you see is what you get. Let me see if I go into let's see, marketing. My logo. Uh, I'll put my logo. Oh, geez, that was bad. That was not what I meant to do. So apparently, you can't just drag and drop. So you have to insert an image. Um, oh, so another thing with images, you have to be hosted somewhere. Um, you can't. This is obviously not going to host it. So that's why it was such a a pain right there. So if you're looking for, there's a free, um, it's image BB, IMG BB .com. Um, you can up, you can host all of your stuff for free. Like it, it, there's, there's a 32 megabyte limit, but that's a bunch of pictures that you can get on there. So if you need to host a picture for your website, this is a great tool to use. And then you just drag and drop all that stuff right into command and boom, instant web page. Anybody have any questions? Anything else you want to cover? Even if this made you think of something else and you're like, oh, now I'm wondering about that. Go ahead and ask me. Got it. I have a question. Yep. I can no longer log into command on my phone and I don't know why. It takes me to the consumer app. Are you typing in agent.kw.com? It doesn't matter what I tap, type in, I always end up on the consumer app. Can I make an appointment with you? Yeah, I mean, on I, your I phone? Get, yeah, and I need to be able to get on, well, I feel like I need to because I'd like to be able to answer the texts when they come in um, yeah. to Kelly. So, but I, I don't know, maybe there's a way to get to command from the consumer app. I don't know, I can't, if I even hit the command button on Kelly, it takes me to the consumer app and I cannot find to get to my tasks. Okay. Um, so I don't know, but I don't, there I don't there is, you know, there is no app for command. You just have to go to, um, you just have to open up your browser and type in agent.kw.com, log into command that way. I, I don't know what, I don't, I've never used Kelly to get anywhere. Okay. Well, maybe we can, because I'm not able to access what I access on my um, power. That I, I can't get to the same place on my phone that I get to on my tower and I feel like I should be able to get to the same place. Yeah. That makes sense. And yet I'm typing in the same exact um, uh, address. Uh, let me see if I... I'm just confused. Hey, I just tried it just, um, do you have an iPhone, Chris? No, I have an Android. Oh, that should still work. I just went to... It's to the Galaxy. It's like one of their newer phones. It should definitely work. I feel like it should work. Yeah. Where, 
Where are you going from command? Or from Kelly? Um, there's a, isn't there a place on the bottom that says command? Yeah, it goes in the command and there's contacts, my insights, map, referrals, mortgage, task manager. So from there, when I hit task manager, it goes to the consumer app on my phone. Yeah, I can't get to that anymore. So, I used to be able to, but I can't. So it's not, maybe you need to update Kelly or maybe check your updates, make sure that you're, you're updated. Cause I mean that it shouldn't even take you anywhere. It should just open up Kelly like that. This is features that are, that are staying in Kelly. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, something's not working right on mine. <laughs> yeah. Um, almost everything now is actually up and running. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, because I cannot access, you know, people are texting me and I cannot access their text messages unless I get on a regular tower and I want to be able to answer people. So you like need immediately. To, I, I mean, don't want to have to go to a tower. Right. So yeah. Kelly, Kelly's going to notify you, but honestly, when you click on the notification, um, I feel like it, it doesn't work properly. It's not going to take you into the actual notification. So. No. You need to go to the, you just need to open up a web browser, you know, just your normal, like, like Chrome or whatever. Um, and then you need to go to just agent.kw.com. Okay. And then that'll log you in. You should be able to log into command. This is how I do it for my phone because, um, yeah, this is where I can't get on my phone. Huh? This is what you have right now is where I cannot get to on my phone anymore. Whereas I used to, and as soon as I put the new consumer site on my phone, I cannot get here on my phone anymore. Hey, um, so Chris in, in, um, or in Kelly, when you, uh, down at the bottom, when you click on more, you have profile and settings. Are you logged in on there? So if you go to more. Hold on. <sighs> so it's like under profile, I can see my command profile or my profile um let's find out and then under settings well under settings it just says so in kelly is that what you said yeah if you go down to the bottom and then you click on more like on more. You see the home screen yes now what am i looking for settings does it say what brian says like does it, it look says, like his? yes it says more yeah under profile does it have all of your information Yes. Well, yeah, I guess if you were logged in, you have to log in at the very beginning. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's an offline, like physical thing that you have to look at. Yeah. We have to look at that, I guess. I mean, because there's. Oh. So, do you know the option to open in command? Right. The, so. The thing is, though, that, that probably they're working on a command app but there is no app command app right now. So most okay. likely uh, that work. don't, don't open in command. Okay. Again, you just have to go into your browser mm -hmm. and then log in like normal. Just go to agent.kw.com. Okay. I'm going to try that again and see what happens. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. there you are. Okay. So now go home. Go into your wherever, yeah, whatever. Go to. Okay, that's where it took me. Right. No, let's. Okay, close that out. Consumer app. Yep. Close your consumer app. We don't need that. Okay. Um, and then go to just your Chrome browser, your internet. Now you guys all see my thing. <gasps> Did y'all memorize it? My password. See, when I sign in, that's where I end up. Every time. Okay, so go back to your Chrome browser. Okay, uh, agent.kw.com at the top. See? Yeah, up in the, the, the three dots up there in the corner. Um, go down to um, show desktop. Desktop site right there. Click that little box. Now sign in. Huh. What? For whatever reason, the mobile version is is recognizing for must just be for Androids, I guess, but um, it's recognizing the agent site as um, a link that should open in 
um, the KW command site. So by going to the desktop site, it removes whatever it is that it's recognizing. So, um, and they must be working on stuff because I keep getting this, the same, um, the task temporarily unavailable, so. Okay, thank you so much because this has been such a problem because yeah. now I can see people's texts and respond to them. Yeah, so now you should be able to go into your, um, you can, you yeah. know, pinch to Zoom and then go over to contacts and do all that good stuff, so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yay, that's just such a problem. Thank okay. you. No problem. Hopefully that was helpful. There you go. See, look, look how much, look how technology savvy you are now. I get better all the time. Thank you. Right. Does anybody else have any questions or anything else that they're thinking about or um, otherwise I feel like we can wrap this thing up. It's been an hour. All right. Well, hey, Brian. Oh yeah. Uh, is this recorded? Can we go back and watch this or? Sure is. Okay. So where do I go to find it? Uh, I'll put it on YouTube and I'll send a link out to the Facebook group. I love YouTube. Okay. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. I have a really quick question. Yeah, go ahead. I'm thinking that I might have to set up another um, meeting with you mm -hmm. only because as I was following all of your tutorials here, every time I log into anything on my website, everything's blank. And it'll say, oops, an error occurred every single time. So I don't think, I think my website is not operational because, and the other thing is yesterday when, you know, when we were working on the app, I did download the app. I have some things configured in my, you know, the buying and selling guides, just different pictures, whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's not the same on my phone when I downloaded my app. Um, I have just been reading recently that a lot of people are now getting into updating their guides and there is some problems with the guides updating actually after you save everything. It saves in command, but it's not pushing to the website. So that I think is a known issue and um, I'm going to bring that up. I feel like, is that already on our list? I think that's already on the list for Thursday. So um, I'll definitely bring that up and I, you're not the only person that's having that problem. So um, that's just something that we're going to have to suffer through for a little bit until we get it you know figured out okay well okay. And so we, my... we can meet again if you want um later this week okay i mean I, it'd probably be easier just to show you my screen but there's like literally nothing in the designs yeah um that most likely we're gonna have to just it, um it's gonna be a, a security like cookies and cash and um clearing out all that stuff uh so we're going to have to, um, you have to go into this, the settings and clear out cookies and cache for the browser. Um, you have to make sure that you're using Google Chrome. Um, command was built on uh, the Google Cloud system, so it works the best with Google Chrome. And if you're using Microsoft eEdge or um, even like Safari or whatever, sometimes it gets a little glitchy. So Chrome is the best way to access it. Okay. And then when you clear out all of the cookies and cache and everything, it allows the, because what happens is um, your, your backend and your computer will store all of this information so that everything loads faster. But when Keller Williams were put, they're pushing so much updates constantly that the, um, when it does or whatever, your cache, is, your, your browser is like, no, no, we already have this information. We don't need new information. And then it doesn't refresh the information. So you have to clear everything out and let it rebuild and reload everything new, fresh with all the new code. And typically that will take care of any problems that you're having. Okay. Uh, maybe that's my problem because I'm using Safari. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you definitely need to use Chrome for sure. Okay. Let me give that a try. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. And then, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you guys want to head out, then I will see you next Tuesday and then lunch with Robert's at noon. So don't forget. <laughs>